All right, for this week's fly, we're gonna go with a Squalum Stonefly uh, Adult. Uh, we're just gonna go jump right into the tying here, and we'll get this one out. Get the new hook in, be ready to go. Uh, we're tying on a um, Umpqua. What is this? A U203 size six today. Uh, get that to where the light's not hitting it. There it is. And um, just a regular stimulator style, hopper style, you know, bent hook. Um, this is what we're going to use. we got the phone ringing right now. Alright, it's not work. We're good. But we're just going to stop this. I'm going to stop the phone from ringing first. Um, we're going to stop this right between the barb and the point of the hook, and that's where our thread's going to. That's going. That's where I'm going to stop my thread, so I know that's how far I'm going to take my tail back. And actually, the tail's going to hang a little bit further past, but we'll get into that once we get going. Um, for the tail, we're just going to take this uh, regular black short fine deer hair. And we're going to trim this up. The phone's ringing again. It's driving me nuts. We're just going to trim this and spin this in our hand, clean it up a little bit. And throw this in the stacker. Um, the squalas here out west are just like the October caddis. It was the last big hatch of the year. Well, the squalas are the first big one of the year, usually starting in May, April time frame. Um, they're pretty sporadic fly. You know, some rivers obviously have better than other, others. I think Jefferson, from what I heard, has a really good squall hatch. Uh, pretty prolific. But the majority of them, they're pretty sporadic. But being they are a big fly, the fish are pretty opportunistic when it comes time for these things to be in the water. So what we're going to do with our short funnel, we have it stacked. And we're just going to measure this out. So you can see where our thread stopped. It's kind of tough because it's pretty similar to the hook color. And we're going to have that tail laying back just slightly. So we're going to take this in our left hand and just trim this nice and flush. Now our thread is right about at our halfway point on the hook. And give this a spin. Give this a nice, just first first one nice and loose. And then move your hand slightly. This is gonna be our tail and our body. So we're gonna move this forward just a little bit and get two good wraps on this. Now bring your other hand around and just work these fibers all the way around the hook. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cross over on the top and make a wrap. Cross over on the top and make a wrap. And just repeat this all the way to the back. And if you look at the natural squalls, they are... Uh, the back half of the fly is black and it has like a tan colored rib to it. So this that's just what we're trying to imitate here. Now bring this back to where your thread is right between your hook point and the barb. And we're just going to let these fibers go back and extend past the hook so you can see uh, looks like it's coming through pretty clear that this is just going to be sticking back past the hook that's going to imitate the egg sac that's on the back of the squala. I mean if you look at it from the underneath side on a natural 
this is very apparent so that's an important part that you want in here um, originally when I was messing around with this pattern I had um, I was using rubber or I was using some foam and I just couldn't get the taper right I couldn't get it to build I couldn't get the bulk how I wanted it so I settled on this deer hair setup and I actually like the way this floats a lot better and we'll work this all the way to the front and we're set the biggest thing with this when you're when you're putting this deer hair in make sure that it goes all the way around the hook so when you pull your thread tight you're not going to have any hook showing this looks like it's just one body you know, I mean, it looks like uh, just one material that you put in there. There's no gaps in the hook or anything like that. And I am missing one piece here. This is just regular two millimeter foam. Um, I'm going to cut this off. And the only thing that this is doing is covering up my gap. If it were, if you were using like a stimulator length deer hair, you wouldn't have to do this, but I don't have black stimmy deer hair at the moment, so I'm just throwing in a little piece of foam, and that way it just covers up my, my gap so I don't have a huge drop off between my deer hair body and the bare hook where I'm going to build the rest of the body up. So just leave a little gap there to where you're going to be able to put in we're going to put some cdc and some deer hair uh, toward the front so just leave a little bit of a gap eighth of an inch ballpark that um let me see here i'm getting ahead of myself so with this one of the main reasons why i made this pattern almost entirely out of deer hair is because i like to twitch um, I like to twitch stoneflies and caddises especially when they're on the surface so just give them a quick twitch seems like sometimes you're able to get a reaction out of a fish because they are active they do dance a lot on the water so being able to twitch them just gives you an added benefit um, that you won't have if you're doing you know just like a CDC wing or whatever it may be now you can run a you can you can tie and fish uh, smaller chubby and imitate the squall is just fine it's just I don't know for some reason I like this a little bit better maybe because I was the one that tied it I don't know but whatever reason it is I like tie I like fishing these a little bit better just a personal preference whatever you prefer though entirely up to you so we just have some barred rubber legs that we're going to tie in. Don't worry about the length for now. Just kind of get them somewhat even. It doesn't matter. You can put more sets of legs in if you want. I just go with the one set on each side and it seems to work out fine for me. But. Um, Let me get a, no, we're not going to half hitch, we'll be all right. That one leg was looking like it wanted to rotate, but we'll get one or two more wraps on there and it'll be good. So now, I got just some tan, super fine dubbing, and normally on dry flies I say to keep this stuff really thin um, here it doesn't really matter so much because we have so many things that are that float so well you know with the deer hair um, it's really buoyant so getting a little bit of extra dubbing on here is not gonna matter too much Plus, if you try and do it really thin, it's going to take you a long time to weave all the way through here and get your body filled out to match the 
the back half of it. So just take, start working this right through your legs. Check our underside, we'll make one more wrap there. And if you can, it, it's not critical at all. The front half of these squalos are a little bit thicker than the back half. So don't worry too much about getting a excess dubbing because they are a little bit bigger. Um, but don't go crazy with it to where it looks like a football in the front. Just a nice little taper. Um, a lot of that's going to wind up being covered up as you'll see here in a little bit. But we'll take and whip finish this and we're going to change our thread over. There we go. Once again, if you look at the underside of a squala, it has the black backside with the black tail, um, the tan rib, and then the front of the body is the majority of it's tan and it has like two black dots underneath so that's what we're going to try and imitate with this black thread um, I don't think it's necessary at all this is going back to my Pennsylvania roots where um, you know we tried to imitate everything to a T just because the fish got so much pressure and it, it, it was we got a little bit excessive I think at times admittedly but I mean, the old habits die hard, so I'm still always inspecting flies, looking at it, seeing what I can do to make it look as close to the natural as possible, but I don't really feel that it's necessary to put these dots underneath, so if you want to stay with just pure tan thread, I think that would be fine. Maybe touch it up with a Sharpie or something at the end. But for our underwing, I just threw that straw over top there, keep my legs out of the way to where I'm able to work with our underwing and overwing a little bit easier. But for the underwing, we're going with, um, this is just some dark gray or dark done CDC. And I tie this in here mainly just to cut down on the overall tone of the wing. Um, it, once again, you look at the wings, they're like a done, mottled brown, sort of mixed color. So, what I do is I go with a natural deer hair on top, and then this dark done CDC. And it kind of gives me, you'll see once, once I finish the fly up, I'll flip it upside down. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about. It kind of tones down the overall color of this uh, of the deer hair that we're going to use for the stimulator style wing. And we're just going to take a little chunk of this. Go ahead and cut this out. And as always when you're working with the deer hair, just run it through a comb real quick. Clean this up. And that should be a decent amount right there. Probably a little bit excessive. Probably take some of that out, but we'll work with it. Throw it in your stacker, get your tips nice and even. Just like when, you know, if you watched the caddis video I did a couple of months back, same thing. Measure this out. It's going to be going right about, or you can even take it probably past your tail just a little bit, but certainly past your CDC. Measure your deer hair out, and then just clip this nice and square. Give your thread a good spin. I'm going to go back as far as I can, 
throw your hair in there and go one, two, and then pull tight on the third. You can see you get that nice clean head on the deer hair and go ahead and whip finish. Hopefully this one cooperates for me here. There we go. Now, there we have our overwing tied in. Go ahead and get rid of this straw, get our legs out. Get those trimmed to length. Um, you see a lot of folks leave these legs pretty long. Um, I really don't. I'll just pull the front ones up, give those a trim, make sure that they're somewhat even, leave your back ones a little bit longer. Uh, I'll take those just past the tail, give those a trim, and that's probably a little bit longer than what I'd like them actually, but we'll not get too picky and leave those be. But as I flip this over, you can see how the CDC tones down the overall color of the wing. The tan, the brown, whatever color you decide to use up here isn't near as apparent. I mean, this is what the fish is going to be seeing. So they're seeing this done color just like the naturals have. So, but if you want to, you can omit the CDC. You can just throw in the overwing and call it good. The last thing I do on this is because I'll try and do this to where the camera can see it. Like I mentioned, there's two black dots and this is just me being a little bit picky. I'll just kind of tone this down. I'll throw another dot in there and then I'll go right down the sides with a marker and just kind of cut down on some of the tan because it's really the really only the underneath side of the adult that has the tan on it so I cut down some on the sides and there you can see like when I flipped it over the first time the tan just kind of came right out at you and it was pretty pretty apparent just toned it down a little bit and I think it looks a little closer to what the naturals are but Long story short, got a little carried away on that one, but there is your Squala Stonefly. Um, I have a few wild CDC hairs flying around, but I kind of like it actually. Um, anyhow, any questions as always, send them to me and I will get back to you. But thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly.